Good afternoon, and thank you for coming to this afternoon's performance of Jose Maurizio Nunez Garcia's Requiem. A couple announcements at the beginning, as this will be a work that is completely performed without stopping and no applause. If this is new for you, a multi-movement work, um, this is, I know there will be times when you want to applaud because they have done just such a brilliant job. We do ask you to hold it until the very end. We want to thank First Community and especially Stuart Pitchford and his crew for being here today and helping us with this. This is being live streamed. So for those of you who are here live watching, you are more than welcome to go back and watch it later and experience this gift of music again by going to fcchurch.com or by going on Facebook to the First Community page and scrolling down to find the concert performance. So a huge thank you to First Community for letting us have this performance in this beautiful space. A big thank you to Sue White, who is a dear friend and a retired teacher from Bexley High School, who is the secretary of Bexley Choral Society, a group that has not existed, as you would imagine, for the past two years. And they are with us this afternoon joining the high school singers on this concert. So a thank you to Sue for making this possible as well. A thank you to Chad Baker on organ and Grayson Abend, he was going to wave behind me so you can see where he is. Um, these two have helped with teaching this work to the high school singers through these past two months. Grayson Abend is a student teacher and has been working with all of the middle and high school singers, grades 7 through 12, and we're really, uh, really honored to have him. And of course, the fabulous Chad Baker has been with us for a past, the past few years, and the students would not have been able to have learned this work without them. Another thank you to the Bexley Music parents for helping to put this on. As you notice, there are probably some instrumentalists behind me that maybe you don't recognize, right? Some of them you might, like Mr. Spangler, right? But some of them you may not recognize. We are really lucky to be able to have this community-wide event throughout the Columbus area. We have Bexley students, staff, alums, and some retired teachers. We have teachers from Ohio State, we have students and alums from Ohio State. We have teachers and alums from Capitol and other wonderful players and singers from the general Columbus community joining for this work. So it's really, really wonderful and we could not make that happen without the support of the Bexley Music Parents. I do know that they were selling some tickets um, uh, for a raffle and so I'm pretty sure they, you could probably talk them into purchasing one at the very end if you'd like. We will also be accepting any donations you feel led to give to help defray the cost of putting on this production this afternoon. So a little bit about Jose Maurizio. He was considered to be one of Brazil's finest musicians and composers. He was born in Rio de Janeiro in 1767. Although his grandmothers were enslaved people, his parents were freeborn. His father, who was a tailor, died when he was six years old. So. Jose Maurizio was reared by his mother and aunt. Garcia ex exhibited his talents at an early age. He composed various melodies, played the harpsichord and guitar without any training. His family was poor, so he helped support them by singing popular songs and playing piano in local inns. He began to teach music when he was only 12 years old, and he wrote his first composition when he was 16. Garcia decided to become a priest and began studies that would prepare him for that vocation. In 1798, he became the chapel master, so his duties with that included composing, supervising performances, renting scores and instruments, teaching music, and appointing musicians. He continued his teaching activities for the next 28 years, imparting knowledge and skills to some of the finest Brazilian musicians of the time. Brazil changed a bit in 1808, if you know your history. The Portuguese royal family, the royal court, and top clergy fled by ship to Brazil. So all of a sudden, Brazil had over 15,000 new residents. The musicians from Portugal were very highly skilled, and they had a slightly different training and musical experience. They felt that Garcia's background and abilities were inferior, and they began to work against him. The Portuguese clergy also worked against him, because they didn't want to see a person of color in such proximity to the royal household or to the church hierarchy. In spite of all of this pressure, Garcia still continued to fulfill his duties faithfully. 
Some difficulties did arise because at that time, musicians were paid before they performed. And the chapel master, we are doing that too today, so it's fun. And the chapel master was responsible for paying them. He was supposed to be reimbursed later. So Garcia paid some of these musicians what he could, and he took out a mortgage on his house to, to uh, get the rest of the money. He was not reimbursed, and he lost his house. Friends paid off the mortgage once he got the house back, but he only had it for a short time because they didn't have the funds to keep paying. When Napoleon was defeated in 1814, these European exiles from all over returned to their homes. And two years later, in 1816, Dona Maria, who was the Portuguese queen, died in Rio de Janeiro. Garcia's mother also died in that same month. So he composed an office for the dead and requiem mass in response to a request for their funeral ceremony in memory of the, of the queen. Garcia must also have had his own mother in mind as he composed this work. This is the requiem that we will sing today. Jose Maurizio Nunez Garcia died in abject poverty in 1830 at 63 years of age. He composed over 237 works and is regarded as the father of Brazilian classical music, considered a master of the classical European style. Most of his works were thought to be lost until 1941, and in that year, a musicologist and researcher, who was also a professor at the School of Music, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, founded an organization devoted to performing Brazilian music, especially music by Garcia. That is how we are able to have the written music that we perform today. A little bit about the Requiem written in 1816. In case you are unsure of requiems and the settings, a lot of musical settings reflect the times in which they were composed. Some don't even set the complete text. Some composers have written requiems for memorial events, whereas others have written them for music for concert performances like we will give today. The Mozart Requiem, which is arguably the most popular of the 18th century requiems, reflects that style of that period. Garcia's Requiem is similar to Mozart's. It's also in the key of D minor, um, and it is unknown whether uh, Garcia knew of Mozart's Requiem when he started composing his own. When you go through and start listening to the Requiem, I'll draw your attention to a few things. Um, the introit of Garcia's has the same quiet intensity starting as the first movement of Mozart's. Garcia did conduct the Brazilian premiere of Mozart's Requiem in 1819, but there was that three-year difference that there um, is not clarity on whether or not he was aware of it at the time he composed his. The intro goes straight into the Kyrie, which resembles Mozart's in its energy, starts in very much the same style. Next, we get the gradual and tract, and it has a variation of that intro. The next movement is the longest, the dramatic Dies Irae. In many settings of the Requiem, various portions of the Dies Irae are deliberately identified as solo or choral. Although this movement contains solo sections, Garcia creates one seamless whole in which solo and choral passages flow into each other. It's full of dynamic contrasts, and it becomes impossible to regard Garcia outside of the Romantic age. His setting of this dramatic text is filled with strongly contrasting moods, from outbursts of fear to apprehensive whisperings of hushed terror and Italian-flavored lyricism, particularly in the beautiful Ingemisco you will hear the soprano sing. The offertory contains two very luscious bass solos interspersed with the chorus giving commentary. And then we get to the Sanctus and Benedictus. The Sanctus has almost um, a martial feel, very stately. Often a hosanna is set faster but in this case, Garcia maintains the same pace for the Hosanna as he does for the Sanctus. The Benedictus is a gentle, melodic passage for the soloists, and then you'll hear the Hosanna come back. The final movement, the Agnus Dei and Lux Eterna, are set as one unit. Often requiems will end in combinations of quiet, alternating, uh, alternating with fury. And in this case, Garcia's setting is relatively quiet. Only in the last few measures of the choral part is there a dramatic crescendo on the text, quia pius es, for thou art gracious, which concludes the work. Three years ago, we had the, the really great joy to perform the Mozart Requiem in 2019. So the seniors that are back behind us, that would have been their freshman year. And as we know, there are reasons we weren't able to have a major work 
combined performance the last two years. A requiem is a mass for the dead, but I would argue that a requiem is actually a mass for those who are left behind. The world these past years is in mourning, whether it is for a loss of opportunities, maybe a job, a sense of security, health, a sense of empathy and civility in our world, um, or loss of a loved one. So I ask you today to let the words that you will hear sung over and over, over, Dona Eis Requiem, grant them rest, be a calming, healing balm for you today as you listen to this performance. Thank you for being here, and we will begin the Requiem in a moment.